Welcome to another episode of My Bench Jeweler. Today we were going to uh, make a uh, bracelet, a sterling silver bracelet, but uh, time got away from us so we're going to have to do something a little simpler in order to, to get another video up on YouTube for you. I try to get these lessons out, oh, three or four of them a week so that you have uh, new, new projects and products to make. Uh, this one here is uh, a little uh, feather. It uh, takes after the uh, Lakota feather, uh, Indian feathers that they, they make up there. This one here, uh, we're going to do some bright cutting and some regal cutting. Uh, it has a freshwater pearl in it, as you can see. And then we used a uh, sterlinium uh, silver rod. Now this is still sterling silver, but it has a special anti-tarnishing uh, agent that's uh, mixed into the silver, so it keeps it from, from tarnishing. Uh, you can buy this on the uh, my website at mybenchjeweler.com. It's uh, well worth buying it because it uh, it uh, is tarnish free, so you can work on it, solder on it, and so forth, and it's it is, stays relatively uh, shiny. So and then once you do polish it, it will remain shiny for a very long time. So this one here, we're uh, we're going to go ahead and make this one today. Uh, we're using a French earring right here, and we're using the sterlinium uh, uh, 18 gauge uh, silver, and we're using a little water pearl, and uh, then we're building a little uh, feather to go on the end of it. So it uh, it has a dangle to it, and uh, very popular. It, it I think or will become very popular, and I think if you make this, you could you could do it with a lot of different things. You could use beads here, any kind, you know, like a garnet bead for, for a birthstone or uh, a number of other ones, jade, uh, lapis, there's all kinds of little beads you can buy. So, uh, I'm, we'll get started now and see how I did this. Okay, to start with, Take your uh, starlinium wire and you're going to want 18 gauge. You could use a little uh, thicker if you want, 16 gauge, but 18 works pretty well. And the first thing we want to do with our uh, starlinium wire, or our sterling silver, is uh, we're going to flatten both ends and we're going to do one at a time. And so to do that, you use a flat hammer with a ball peen on one end of it, like a this. Oops. One like this, or you can use the uh, chasing hammer. Uh, you begin by just, you only want to come in about a quarter of an inch. So here's my finger, and there's a piece. We want to flatten that. Okay, so now you want to take that and you're going to hold it between your two fingers just like this and roll it to halfway over so that it's it's uh, straight up and down like this. Let me see if I can show you this. Here's your flap. Okay, here's your flat side that we just made. Now you want to come straight up and down with it, and then you want to make your other flatten your other piece. So they'll be a little different than each other. Now I'm using about a three-quarter inch six by six steel plate. Uh, I think uh, three inch by three inches. Uh, you can you can buy a six two, but I think I, I sell three by three. I have to look out front and see what they, what they are, but you can get those on the website if you don't have a piece. So you can probably go to a machine shop near your town or in your town and pick pick a piece up too. Okay, so now we got a flat and straight. As you can see, and that's the start of our uh, 
earring and like I said we'll need two pieces like this an inch and a half long of sterlinium wire and then uh, the next stage is to drill holes in those and I'll show you how to do that okay you wanna use some sort of a bench block uh, they make all kinds of bench blocks and use ones with little clamps on them you can clamp them to a table but you'll need a some sort of a bench block or a piece of wood that will work too and you're gonna have to have some sort of a tiny drill a little flex shaft drill and you want to use a .007 drill bit and uh, you want to try and find the center of your drill of your piece of silver and you just drill a hole right through it now I'm going to use my drill bit just to open it a little bit now you're going to do the opposite side Now you could use a little punch and get a, a center center hole. I just guess. <laughs> but I don't always hit them perfect, but as long as there's quite a bit of, of metal between the, your uh, piece there so that it doesn't wear out, you'll be just fine. So you're trying to find about the center. So that's, a, that's our first step, or second step I guess it would be. So you want to put your drill bit away if you're going to buy these, these styles. Now I could give you a list. Uh, I think th there's three uh, drill bits that would be the best to buy and you can buy them through me individually. Uh, otherwise if you go to the uh, to the uh, the big parts places you're going to have to buy a whole set and they're what 40 or 50 dollars. So better off to just buy the three most popular ones you need and then you'll have your drill bits. Uh, I've been looking for a little flick shaft that you can buy uh, for reasonable dollars, but right now there are just not very many out there. You can buy a Fordham and it will work for you, but it's not the most ideal. Anyway, let's move on here. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, we want to make a little uh, pearl. And uh, I have freshwater pearls. And then you want to use... Uh, 24 gauge wire because these are these are center drilled but they're not very big so the next thing you want to do is uh, string your pearl and you will need 24 gauge wire silver wire now you don't have to use uh, sterlinium I just use plain sterling silver fine wire which is 24 ga gauge and uh, I carry quite a bit of that on hand here so I'm just going to use a piece and I'm going to cut off all about to be safe here I'm going to cut off about an inch so now I have a, whoops, of an inch and I'm going to make a jump ring on one end so you take it, take it in your uh, round nose pliers take it in your round nose pliers about quarter of an inch up on the on the on the, the pliers so you have a reasonable size jump ring hold your thumb right around it and then you just roll the pliers just like that And that forms your little jump ring. Okay. You make your little round it, and then you come behind it, just like this, and make a little bend so that you have it so it centers itself. And you put the uh, little water pearl or whatever you want to use. I use the little water pearl because it really looks nice. You go ahead and. Uh, Slip your, uh, I'm using freshwater pearls because I think they look the best. 
and just go ahead and shape it, shape it right up there on the end of it. Oops, I went the wrong way. So now we got our little freshwater pearl on there. So the next thing we want to do is come in here. Now we have to kind of think how this is going to set. So this is going to set like this in here and I want the uh, feather to hang down so we're going to turn this sideways and we're going to form this the opposite direction so we're going to come up here like that and I'll get it bent so it's started Just go right on around it. Now, don't pay, don't worry too much about whether that turned flat for you. As you see, my you can take a pair of pliers and hold both sides, and you can kind of adjust these so that you have the one going horizontal and the other one going sideways or up and down and sideways. Now once you've got that done, you just come in here and get your little nippers. Well, that one slipped away with it. I try to hang on to all that wire because I melt it down later on, roll it in the rolling mill and uh, make some more flat wire with it. Okay, so we got our little pearl made. So our next thing to do is make us a feather. Uh, we're going to make a little Indian feather. So I'm going to try and match the one I already made, which you, you've seen in the first part of the, the episode. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a wire. Now, I'd already cut one out. I, uh, you can do this a couple of ways. Use your, your Dicom Blue, or you can use a black uh, uh, inky or what do they call them? <laughs> Sharpies I think. Yeah, you can use a, a black Sharpie like this here and then you can scribe it but the problem with that is if you don't like the way the the feather looks then you've got to scratch into your silver and it's hard to to uh, get it out of there and start over so, so sometimes it's just easier to use a pencil and you can see where I started so I'm going to just make a line See, can you see this? Yeah, I'm going to make a line just straight across. See where where my little round knob was there. All right, and now I know that my feather comes right to the edge, and uh, now the other side we'll just guess about the same. So we'll just go ahead and. You know, see how nice that is? You can just stir it over. Oh, I'm still over, too, not over far enough. There we go. There's our little round knob. See right here? And we got one started right here. Alright. Now we're going to come back out like that and we're going to come out and that's about right because you can shape it a little bit after you uh, saw it out so the next thing to do is get your uh, saw frame and this is uh, this is 20 gauge uh, sterling silver sheet metal and we're going to I'll show you how to start it then I'll uh, finish this off off uh, camera you just lay your almost flat on there to get your teeth mark started
and then you straighten it up so you're, you're cutting up straight up and down. You're not applying heavy pressure. You're letting the saw blade do the, do the work. Now the other way to do this would have been to have uh, before I uh, fancied that uh, feather would have been able to have made a uh, copy of it and you could do that by gluing it on before you shape it you could have just glued it onto some, uh, with hot glue onto your sheet metal and just cut another one out now your teeth always want to go pointing your teeth on your saw blades are always backwards on a hacksaw the teeth point to the front on a jeweler saw the teeth pull to the back so you're cutting on the, on the back stroke. And you put a little pressure on that. Hear that pop? That means it's nice and tight. And we'll finish up from the back side. And here we go. If I can find it. Huh? All right. There's our little feather. Now let me. Uh, I'll just shape it a little about about the same as the other one. Well, let's go ahead and take a look here. And uh, then the next thing to do is to put a little uh, curve on it and we'll uh, polish it up and we'll do a bright cut. So stand by as I get ready for the next next uh, stage of this. Sold out. I've kind and of we'll, shaped uh, it close right to back. the other one. <clears throat> now this is uh, handcrafted so bear in mind that you don't have to make it identical to the other one. If you want commercial style jewelry, that's a whole different chapter, and uh, uh, th everything is done with punches and dies, and uh, the the dies are made uh, uh, by machining them, and then uh, you can punch out feathers and uh, leaves and everything that you that you've made through a die, and th that would be a commercial piece. Then it would always look exactly the same. That's not what we're doing here. We are bearing in mind hand crafting or hand carving our pieces so we're doing it in, in metal and we're trying to get it similar to the other one so that it looks about the same but it doesn't have to be perfect uh, that's the that's the beauty of, of making this stuff now I'm going to try and not break a drill bit so that you can see this this is I'm holding my hand on the on the uh, silver this is a 007 drill bit, and we drill a hole through the middle. Now we want to, I can use the drill bit here just a little bit, or I could go with a bigger one. But I'm just going to kind of wobble it back and forth here a little bit, because I want my little hole to be a little bit bigger. Well, there we go. So. Now we've got our hole drilled, so I'm going to use a uh, .009 drill bit. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and so that our little leaf will work. Now when you're done with your drill bits, make sure you take them out of your flex shaft. I know I, I say this all the time, but they are expensive and you do not want to uh, ruin them. And if you leave them in your flex shaft or your little drill, sooner you will knock the drill over or it'll hit the drawer or, or a bench and you'll break your drill bit. So we don't want to do that. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is I might want to lay this next to my uh, new my other feathers so you can see they're, how close we are. You know we don't want it too far out but so I'm going to lay this right here like that.
and we're pretty close. So, next thing to do would be to shape it, polish it. Now, I always curve these a little bit, and I use a, I showed you a, I think it's a two episodes back, how to use a, a piece of wood, oak wood, with a ball burr, and then uh, making yourself a little uh, dome inside the, the oak wood. Now, oak is very hard, so it will, you can use it a number of times before you wear that uh, mold out. But once you've uh, made a little oval in there or a little half round dome in there, you can use that to uh, dome your uh, sheet metal. And uh, as long as it's like 20 gauge, which is what we're using here, 20 gauge sheet metal, it will, uh, it will work just fine for you. Uh, this is, uh, you can cut these down. I, I just bought this uh, for something else. <laughs> but here it is. And you can see where I just dome this a little bit like like that. And then you can just put your little feather in there. Now this isn't quite big enough, so I'd have to use the uh, ball burr and, and burr that out a little bit, which I might do here. So stay tuned here, and I'll show you how to do the next step on this earring. Okay, we're going to... We made this the other day. Just a piece of oak wood, and we're uh, we put a little around third. Well, we started around and we're oval now, but that's fine. We're not trying to make this thing a ball. We're just rounding it out a little bit. Now I'm going to show you how to make something that'll work similar to these these uh, punches, but uh, that comes in another video. So the next thing we want to do now is clean it up. Okay, I use Fabulous. And it's used uh, with a little buffing wheel that you can use on your little drill, your little flex shaft, or your little modem tool. Now why do we want to dome these? Well, because if you dome it, after you polish it up, you're going to see that the light bounces off of it and reflects it like a mirror. So you get far better, uh, a far better uh, brightness look than you would if it was just flat. So you always want to kind of dome these little leaves and little feathers so that they uh, have a uh, reflection coming off of them like a mirror. Alright, now we're about ready to uh, do some bright cutting and some wrinkle cutting and I'm going to show you how to do that. So, now I make these. These are little uh, shellac dishes and uh, we use them to uh, hold our uh, piece in them while we go ahead and uh, get them uh, ready to go. Uh, it holds them in position so you can do some bright cutting and some wrinkle cutting with them. And uh, I'm going to show you just exactly how you do that in just a minute. So let me get set up for that next. Okay, <clears throat> take a little torch right here, and we'll take our pitch here, or well it's not pitch, it's, it's shellac is what it is, and uh, we'll, we want it just to start to bubble. And that's all we need to do. Now that will hold your uh, piece in there until you pop it loose. Well, most of the time. Every now and then it'll, it doesn't hold. But uh, I think it will this time. So, uh, you'll need a bright cutting flat graver and an angle it uh, sharpened graver. And they both have to have a mirror finish on them. So you have to uh, 
use a grinder and grind your, uh, your, your angles on there first, which are 45 degree angles. And then you uh, polish them up on a, on a uh, stone and then uh, using a piece of glass with a piece of uh, emery paper on it, oh, 2,000, 2,500 grit or something like that. I'm going to show you. Okay, regal cut is done by working your graver back and forth, back and forth, and applying very little pressure to the front. You just want to walk the graver back and forth. So this is how you do that. You just I have very little pressure on my palm and I stopped. You see how it's walking it? It's kind of like walking the dog back and forth in a straight line. You can hear it popping, and that's what you're supposed to hear. Then you just snap it to, to pop that uh, chip off of the end down there. Oh, <laughs> that worked. <laughs> Okay, our regal cutting is done. Now we regaled it all the way down to just where the uh, we didn't want it to uh, do the whole whole uh, feather. We just wanted to go down two thirds of the way, and we have a little piece at the bottom which will just polish up and make it really shiny. Now this is curved, as I told you, and it helps when you want to look for a uh, a shiny, glittery look. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our anglet graver and uh, we'll cut right down the middle of, uh, of the feather to make a vein. And you just start just like that. Takes quite a bit of pressure. Okay, now we want to make a couple feather cuts. We'll go on the other side. And we've made a feather. Now all we do is pop it out of there. And uh, the next step will be to uh, give it a little polish down here at the bottom and uh, put the whole thing together and polish, uh, polish our little piece right here. And uh, put our little pearl on here. And you have a completed set of earrings. So stand by and we'll get ready for the next episode. Whoops. <laughs> couldn't couldn't win today. Stand by for the next End of episode. Uh, next part. Here you have two freshwater pearls, two little feathers that you handcrafted. Uh French ear uh hooks or we could make uh post uh, earrings with these two. Now if you do that, I caution you, don't use sterling silver uh wire posts use 14 karat white gold posts. Uh, I do believe I carry those uh, on the website. If not, I can get them. And uh, 
I'll tell you the reason for that. They're a little softer, oh, I'm sorry, they're a little stronger. They won't bend quite as easy and they snap better with, with, the, uh, with the ear backs and uh, less chance of any infection or any uh, reaction to, to uh, 14 karat gold. There's very little nickel silver or nickel in them. It's uh, mostly silver and uh, some nickel and uh, white to make the white gold. But uh, anyway, you can use silver posts, but they're too soft, I think, and your risks are higher of losing your uh, earrings. Now, I, these are sturdy silver uh, uh, French uh, ear hooks, and I kind of like these. Uh, I think it adds a little style to your uh, to your uh, earrings. Now, you could have uh, shortened this this here. These are inch and a half, and uh, but who cares? I mean, uh, you can make it any size you want. You can make them. Uh, half inch, three quarter inch, inch. As, as a matter of fact, if the customer wants them uh, just an inch, you can cut these off and, and remill the uh, ends of these, like I showed you in the in the video. And there you go. You got uh, any size you want from this length uh, downward. Anyway, so hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. <laughs> you you don't know the the, the the whole story, but when I flipped this last one off. It flew out of the, uh, the shellac and I lost it, couldn't find it. This, in the video, rolled off into the, the bench tray and I couldn't find it either. So I ended up having to stop the whole thing and make this piece over twice because I, I misdrilled it and then I <laughs> drilled it again. So it's been kind of a long day and, and like I said I was running out of time so I'm glad I didn't start the uh, bracelet today. The uh, bracelet takes a lot of uh, time to make and uh, we're going to make some designs on it as well so hopefully I'll get to that here in the next uh, couple three days and uh, I, I really enjoy making these earrings for you because I'll tell you the truth I, I believe these will sell for you and uh, that's what this is all about having fun making your jewelry and taking it to the profit Till next time this is Mike and this is the bench jeweler thanks for watching as always